This is Craig, AC5KW, and this is TC Aries Training. This training covers the principles of disaster communications. Number one, keep transmissions to a minimum. In a disaster, crucial stations may be weak. All other stations should remain silent unless they're called upon. If you're not sure you should transmit, don't. Number two, monitor established disaster frequencies. In emergency activations, TC Aries stations should monitor the 146.94 repeater for the resource net. Stations will receive information and assignments from the net control station. If the 146.94 repeater is unavailable, the resource net will move to the next frequency resource in the order shown on the Travis County Aries Communications Resource Schedule, the ICS-217, utilizing first the repeater resources and then the simplex channels until required communications are established. Each TC Aries volunteer should maintain a copy of the current ICS-217 in their ready kit. Number three. Avoid spreading rumors. During and after a disaster situation, especially on the phone bands, you may hear almost anything. Unfortunately, much misinformation is transmitted. Rumors are started by expansion, deletion, amplification, or modification of words, and by exaggeration or interpretation. All address transmissions should be officially authenticated as to their source. These transmissions should be repeated word for word, if at all, and only when specifically authorized. Number four, authenticate all messages. Every message which purports to be of an official nature should be written, signed, and transmitted exactly as received. Written text data modes of transmission are preferred for these messages. Whenever possible, amateurs should avoid initiating disaster or emergency traffic themselves. We do the communicating. The agency officials we serve supply the content of the communications. Number five, strive for efficiency. Whatever happens in an emergency, you'll find some amateurs who are activated by the thought that they must be sleepless heroes. Instead of operating your own station full-time at the expense of your health and efficiency, it's much better to serve a shift at one of the best-located and best-equipped stations, suitable for the work at hand, manned by relief shifts of the best-qualified operators. This reduces interference and secures well-operated stations. Number six, select the mode and band to suit the need. It is a characteristic of all amateurs to believe that their favorite mode and band is superior to all others. The merits of a particular band or mode in a communications emergency should be evaluated impartially with a view to the appropriate use of bands and modes. There is, of course, no alternative to using what happens to be available, but there are ways to optimize available resources. Number seven, Use all communication channels intelligently. While the prime object of the emergency communications is to save lives and property, anything else is incidental, amateur radio is a secondary communications means. Normal channels are primary and should be used if available. Amateurs should be willing and able to use any appropriate emergency channels, amateur radio or otherwise, in the interest of getting the message through. Number eight, don't broadcast. Some stations in an emergency have a tendency to emulate broadcast techniques. While it's true that the public may be listening, our transmissions are not and should not be made for that purpose. Number nine, NTS and ARIES leadership coordination. Within the disaster area itself, ARIES is primarily responsible for emergency communications support. The first priority of those NTS operators who live in or near the disaster area is to make their expertise available to their emergency coordinator, EC, where and when needed. For timely and effective response, this means that NTS operators should talk to their ECs before the time of need so that they will know how to best respond. This is Craig, AC5KW, and this has been TC Aries Training.